Welcome back. Breaking news to get to a live press conference right now being held by Orlando police and the FBI on that mass shooting at a nightclub in Orlando. Let's listen in. And at this time, I'll turn it over to the sheriff. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, while this certainly is a, a tragedy for our community, I will reiterate what Mayor Dyer said, that this community is resilient, and this is a time in which we all should come together. The Orange County Sheriff's Office uh, responded along with the Orlando Police Department to the initial incident. There were deputy sheriffs uh, involved with the Orlando Police personnel on the initial entry just after 2 a.m. this morning. In addition to that, uh, members of my hazardous device team uh, responded and have been engaged in helping to secure the scene as well. We have had as many as uh, about 100 of my personnel who have been actively engaged in this incident. I will also reiterate that this is a collaborative effort between our federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities. At this time, the Central Florida Intelligence Exchange uh, Center has been activated. That is our, our intelligence uh, sharing uh, consortium for this region. Uh, we will be working along with the FBI as well as the other law enforcement agencies as this investigation continues. Uh, again, uh, what I would say to our community is that uh, if you are aware of any of the activities that may have led up to this uh, horrific scene to uh, share that information with your local law enforcement authorities. As we move forward, uh, we will make uh, every effort that we can to ensure that this community remains a safe and secure community. Uh, we have that commitment from all of the local law enforcement agencies. We have multiple sheriff's offices and uh, police agencies who have committed to work to that endeavor. Uh, and if you see some suspicious type activity, we have shared with this community in the past that our expectation is that you say something about it if there's anything that uh, looks unusual. Uh, at this point, uh, this is an incident uh, as I see it, that we can certainly classify as a domestic uh, terror incident. Uh, at this point, I believe the next speaker is going to be uh, the supervisor agent in charge of the regional uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement Officer, uh, Officer Danny Banks. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, I'll reiterate a couple of things that were already said, but importantly, I know one of the most important questions uh, for the state and even nationally is, do we consider this an act of terrorism? Absolutely, we are investigating this from all parties' perspective as an act of terrorism. Uh, Any time that we have potentially dozens of victims in any of our communities, uh, that I think we can qualify that as a, a terrorist activity. Whether that's a domestic terrorist activity or an international one is certainly something we will get to the bottom of. We're glad to have the partnerships that we've already spoken about, particularly the partnership with the FBI here. Uh, one of the important things that obviously we'll get to the bottom of is uh, did we have any indi indicators before this event happened today? Uh, we will have some more information, I'm sure, forthcoming to all of you about who this individual is. Was he a lone wolf? Does he have any associates? Those are certainly all of the things that will be looked into now as part of our intelligence and investigative activities. Uh, you know, the state of Florida is, is a, 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 a huge state, uh, certainly for a lot of different reasons. One of them, tourism and our industry and our businesses here. And we have no suggestion that there's any threat to either of those, either today or in the near future. But that certainly is a concern. Uh, right now, it's important. The message we want to put out is we have no indication of other types of activities uh, similar to last night's activity, either in the state of Florida or anywhere else in the nation right now. Uh, but we are putting every resource, collective resource that we have together to validate that statement and to ensure the safety of the remainder of our citizens, not only through today, but through the next weeks. Uh, as the sheriff said, I really want to reiterate the point. Our See Something, Say Something campaign is valid. It works. But we want to encourage people to use that. As you come up with and you're aware of information that is concerning to you, it's concerning to us. 
if you're aware of information relative to people, either conversations, social media, or actions of people in our community that you believe could threaten the rest of us, uh, please let law enforcement know. Use those tools to let law enforcement be aware of that information so that we can act on it. Uh, I'll turn over the rest of the, the interview now to our assistant special agent in charge for the FBI Orlando office, Ron Hopper. Thank you, Danny. Let me start by saying I offer the condolences to all the friends and family members uh, that are victims to this senseless, tragic act of violence this morning. Um, FBI stands shoulder to shoulder with everyone you see here to address this matter. We are not just looking at this from one perspective. I will tell you that every resource in the FBI will be brought to bear on this investigation. And I would echo, echo what uh, Mr. Banks just said in that at this time, at this particular time, there's no reason to believe we have no credible or singular information to suggest that there's any further threat to Orlando or the surrounding area or anywhere else as it relates to this particular incident. I would caution everyone to be mindful that the FBI is known for slow, methodical, detailed investigations. We will follow the facts, we will see where they lead us to, and we will take them to the ultimate end. There's nothing we won't do to get to the bottom of this case, and we will be prepared to present any information we can when and, a and, when and we can and are able to present it to you. We would look forward to being as completely transparent as possible. I will tell you that uh, we here in the Orlando region, uh, especially with We're the FBI and the partnerships we share Orlando, here, we take that Pulse see something, say something, where there was a multiple casualty shooting early this morning, a gunman going in the nightclub around 2 a.m., multiple fatalities. They're not saying exactly how many people are dead, but they did say they took 42 people to the hospital this morning. Metropolitan Bureau of Investigation, uh, uh, Danny Banks, also classifying this as a, quote, domestic act of terror. They say there is no longer a threat to any residents in Orlando, but now the investigation will continue. We'll, of course, monitor it and have the latest for you. We continue to monitor the breaking situation out of Orlando, a mass casualty shooting at an Orlando nightclub. We were just getting confirmation from the sheriff that 20 people were killed inside that nightclub, a total of 42 casualties taken to the hospital. Um, FBI is on scene. They're calling it an act of domestic terrorism. We, of course, will stay on scene and give you the very latest as we get it. Good Sunday morning, South Florida. Still dealing with some areas of patchy fog. It is not everywhere, but notice visibility is down again in Hialeah. Three miles, a six mile visibility in Miami. Otherwise, we're going to see a lot of sunshine before a few showers later this afternoon. I have your seven day forecast when we come back. Remember, Local 10 News is always on. Local10.com, your smartphone and your tablet. Take us with you. Local 10 News starts right now. 728 and a look from our Fort Lauderdale tower cam. A little hazy. It's hot. It is muggy, but at least not a lot of rainfall out yeah. there right now. Or as much our, like it was yesterday. Or as our, our uh, floor director, Brandon, calls it, Fort Lottie Dottie. Yes. The Fort Lottie Dottie tower <laughs> cam. And notice that the winds are out of the north this morning. A calm right now in Miami, north wind in Key West. Uh, the reason why we're dealing with a northerly wind is because high pressure building over the Gulf of Mexico, just close enough to the state of Florida, is bringing that flow uh, from the north with that counterclockwise motion around the high. So if you can picture that. Uh, but on the radar, no rain for us just yet. Here's that high pressure I was mentioning. So we'll continue with that north wind, but eventually this high is going to pull away towards the west, away from Florida, and then we'll have that east of a sea breeze uh, pop in uh, some showers later in the afternoon and targeting the east coast as well. But a little bit different story for today because we're expecting uh, less coverage of those showers, and I'm only giving a 40% chance for that today. I'm lowering the rain chances by tomorrow and as well as Tuesday. Oh. oh my God, they're all shooting back and forth. Of course, we continue to follow the big breaking news story this morning coming out of Orlando. That's where police say approximately 20 people were killed inside of a nightclub. We also know that the gunman is dead and more than 40 people had to be rushed to the hospital. Laren Livingston is monitoring this. He's been following the story all morning long. Laren? 
Yeah, we've been watching this briefing as it happens live. And as you said, we know dozens have been taken to the hospital. The police chief noted around 40 that we know of that have been taken to the hospital and approximately 20 people dead inside this nightclub where this unfortunate situation has unfolded. We know there now that this was a hostage situation that ended with the shootout with police, nine officers involved, one of them injured, but that officer's injury is minor, according to the police chief there in Orlando, thanks to his bulletproof helmet, he was able to escape a serious injury and officials are calling this a domestic, or excuse me, an act of domestic terrorism and Orlando police sent out a tweet earlier this morning saying the shooter inside the club is dead. This nightclub where this happened Pulse touts itself to be Orlando's premier gay nightclub, but police say they don't believe that that situation had anything to do with what sent this particular gunman to the club. But of course, all of this is under investigation. We're also unclear as to his, I guess, religious affiliation. That's a question that came up during that media briefing, that news uh, conference there. But that's all information that police are now working actively to learn. The last post to the nightclub's Facebook timeline was more than Several hours ago, it read, everyone get out of Pulse and keep running. And take a look at this tweet. It's been retweeted a number of different times, hundreds of times throughout the morning and overnight from a young man who was there in the club after the shooting happened. During this shooting, he claims he and three other people were hiding there inside Pulse after this shooting, that the lights were off, but police had not yet showed up at that point. And then that tweet was preceded by one pleading for anyone outside of the club who read that tweet to tell police that they were in there hiding, sheltering, trying to stay out of harm's way. He later tweeted that he did make it out of that club and was okay. Orlando police even took to Twitter, excuse me, posting a photo of the scene swarming with police cruisers and other emergency vehicles as this situation unfolded. They were trying to keep everybody out of the area as they kind of went through this area. And we're also hearing that they're now searching this club and the surrounding area for any other suspicious devices that may be there on scene and of course we're also hearing from some people who had loved ones at that club who witnessed this situation who may have been injured in this situation and here's what they're telling us this morning um about 207 i got a text message from my daughter and my two nieces please come and get us um please come and get us now they're shooting they're shooting and then about 212 i got a phone call from my daughter saying she was hit and she was bleeding in her arm and she was going to pass out and just come and get her and help her and call the cops and help. And she was just afraid and just it was. And we're hearing that police decided to go into this particular club after that first officer responded to the gunshots and engaged in this shootout with this suspect. They decided to go in after, of course, this hostage situation unfolded because they were getting reports and getting calls from people and they wanted to make sure they got all of those people out, as many of those people out as they could possibly get out as safely as possible. And unfortunately, there were 20 people or around 20 people, according to the chief, that did not survive the shooting still inside this club. But but that's why police tell us they went inside to it, at least try to neutralize and minimize the threat and the risk as much as possible. Of course, like I said, this is a fluid situation. Information continues to come in. We now know that the federal government, state and local officials are all working in concert and investigating this. And they're also asking everyone who may have been there, anyone who may have heard something, saw something to come forward to help them in their investigation as it now is underway there. But a deadly and violent situation out of Orlando this morning that we will continue to monitor here from the local 10 newsroom. For now, reporting live there in Livingston, local 10 news. Now to a story we brought to you as breaking news yesterday. A group of Cuban migrants found just off the coast on Elliott Key. A group of two dozen migrants waiting to be reunited with their family members here in South Florida now. Local 10 news reporter Snell Sabovic has been covering this for us. She is live in Doral. Snell up. Well, Nikki, half of those Cuban migrants after they were processed were brought to Church World Service here in Doral behind me. And we did talk to an employee that works at this organization. He was able to tell me that all 24 migrants consisting of 17 men and seven women have now all been placed with family members. A group of 24 Cuban migrants making it to South Florida shores. 17 men and seven women, one who were told is pregnant, arrived at Elliott Key Saturday morning. They were stranded on a sandbar when a fisherman discovered the group. U.S. Coast Guard, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, Florida Fish and Wildlife, along with U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, all answered the call for help from Black Point Marina in Homestead. 
The migrants were then taken to Customs and Border Patrol in Dania Beach for processing. And once that was complete, they arrived at Church World Service in Doral, where family members were waiting. Kaylee Morales Martin says that his brother is one of those migrants, and word of his arrival took him by surprise. Me asusté porque él ni me lo había contado, no sabía nada, y eso me cogió de sorpresa. Casi me que me desmayo cuando me dijeron eso. Sí. Hasta que pude ahorita contactar con ellos y me dijeron que sí, que la había llegado bien. Now, upon their arrival at Elia Key, we're told that all of those migrants were in good condition. They did not require or need any medical intention. And this does include the pregnant female migrant. We're also told again that all of these Cuban migrants have been placed with family members and that they will be allowed to stay in the United States. Reporting live in Doral, Sonella Sabovic, Local 10 News. Now to vote 2016, new attacks in the race for the White House. The Trump campaign reportedly trying to keep some potential ammunition out of Hillary Clinton's hands as the Republican nominee issues attacks against Democrats and Republicans alike. Trump blasted his critics during a rally in Tampa calling out Mitt Romney after he said some of Trump's uh, comments and statements were racist. Meanwhile, Democratic supporters have also been cranking up the offensive against the billionaire. Trump's attorneys now scrambling to block the release of a recorded deposition in that Trump University lawsuit. The Clinton campaign already targeting that lawsuit, releasing a parody style infomercial. Step three, there is no step three. You won't actually learn anything. It's that easy. This entire operation was set up as a scheme, not a school, but a scheme. Slimy and sleazy, it's fraud. The narrator continues by saying that those steps are to sign up to pay for the university at the amazing price of anything you have. And there is no step three, the narrator says, adding that you won't actually learn anything. And although Trump may be in the spotlight a lot, he's actually an introvert, according to two experts who looked into the handwriting of the presidential candidates. They say Trump's handwriting suggests he's intelligent and hyper-analytical, but that he also tends to disconnect from others. As for Hillary Clinton, experts say she is stubborn and persistent, but also sensitive to criticism. South Florida continues to remember Muhammad Ali. His former training grounds pay a special tribute to the greatest. The Fifth Street Gym on Miami Beach rang 10 bells every hour yesterday, a traditional salute to fallen boxers. Ali spent his early years training there, and while the gym itself has since relocated, friends and those he mentored are keeping his memory alive. I was the round boy in 1964 when Sonny uh, Liston stopped and Muhammad Ali won the championship. He bought his car back, a uh, pink Cadillac, convertible Cadillac, and we used to ride around town, man, with the top down, and you couldn't tell us nothing. We knew it was really big in Louisville, but we wanted to make sure there was something known in Miami Beach where it was his home for decades. To this day, the gym still offers the same workout routine Ali used back in the 1960s. Brown Mackey College will be in loose closing enrollment at 22 campuses, and we'll have more on that story when we come back. Yeah, dozens of European soccer fans, meanwhile, recovering in the hospital this morning after fierce brawls on the streets in France. Yeah, that's right. That and much more on Local 10 News continues. Oh, oh my God. They're all shooting back and forth. We continue to follow big breaking news this morning out of Orlando. That's where police say approximately 20 people were killed inside of a nightclub. We also know that the gunman is now dead and more than 40 people had to be rushed to the hospital. Local 10's Laren Livingston has been following this story all morning long. Laren, they were calling this an act of domestic terrorism. And they did not mince words in saying so. It was one of the first things that we got out of that media briefing involving the mayor, FBI officials, the sheriff, and also the police chief there in Orlando. They're calling this an act of terrorism, domestic terrorism. They say anytime someone goes and targets this many people and there's this amount of life lost, that this is an act of terrorism. And so they're now investigating this. One of the reporters I overheard during that briefing even asked if they think this is some sort of affiliation with ISIS or Islamic threats. And they are not exactly sure, not prepared to say that or go that far, but they are calling this an act of domestic terrorism. Of course, we have video from the scene from this morning. We're told this started as a call um, of shots fired there inside the Pulse nightclub, a gay nightclub there in the heart of Orlando, I'm hearing downtown near the downtown area. An officer went, engaged this suspect. Another officer responded, engaged this suspect in gunfire, and then 
more officers had to come in because this turned into a hostage situation once this individual, this gunman, we're still working to learn who this person is, went inside this club. And police say they called in SWAT and tactical teams to come in because they were getting reports from people inside the club and calling uh, calling for help, tweeting for help out on social media. They were requesting and pleading for help. And so police made the decision to go inside and quote unquote neutralize this threat, so to speak, and engage in more gunfire with this particular suspect, this gunman. We're told he had an assault rifle and that police were able to eventually um, unfortunately kill him in this situation, adding to the loss of life too this situation, but they were able to neutralize that threat, stop this situation, and now they're trying to figure out exactly how many people have unfortunately been injured in this. At last check, the police chief said somewhere around 40, 42 people had been transported to local area hospitals there. We're not sure the extent of those injuries, but likely very serious when we're talking about gunfire, of course, and we're hearing that around 20 people were dead or found dead inside that club, and there could possibly be even more victims. We were also getting tweets overnight from people, one of them from a young man who was hiding inside this club, pleading for anybody to come and help them, him and some other people who were hiding inside of a dressing room. And he even pleaded at one point to tell police to come find us. We're here in this dressing room after this shooting started. There was a Facebook post from this particular nightclub several hours ago, not long after the shooting happened, that told people to get out of the club and just keep running a very tragic situation but we're hearing hearing from police and uh city officials there in orlando that this city is resilient and they will definitely move on from this and hopefully they're getting some help from citizens to help them they're pleading and encouraging people to come to police headquarters to go and speak with fbi officials with the sheriff's department with police officials there to give them the information that they need that will help them with this particular investigation. They're also now canvassing that area, searching this club from what we heard from that briefing for any type of suspicious devices that may be a part of this gunman's plan or may have been a part of this gunman's plan. So they're carefully going over this scene. They're asking people if they saw something suspicious to come forward and say and tell them what they saw that was suspicious in this case. But unfortunately, we have had a mass casualty situation is what the police described this as a mass casualty situation. Close to 20 people dead inside this club, dozens more injured sent to area hospitals as this investigation into this mass casualty situation and this deadly shooting gets underway. Nikki Todd.